The following podcast on the Your Own Pay Podcast Network will contain adult content. Listener discretion is advised. More information about this episode can be found at yourownpay.com. <laughs> hey, bro, let's get into this thing. It's Demasi and Michael just talking tech. Well, we are ready to jump. I'm, I finally got all my shit together for once. Finally. Worry, man, you're, you're, you're doing it on a completely different operating system and uh, that you don't use regularly. Uh, uh, which slightly Although equipment. me in Safari is pretty nice. Like, I was thinking I was going to have to jump into Chrome, and I didn't think about it until I actually pulled up the Google Calendar event. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm going to have to use Chrome. But no. It works. I think the problem comes in is... Uh, if you have multiple people in there, I think it may have, or maybe it's just a video that causes a problem. I don't know. Yeah, it could be because I turned the video off. Yeah, because I've, I've heard people, and I have experienced it where I jumped into a Google Meet in Safari, and like I could not hear the other person. They could hear me, but I could not hear them. And that's the problem I've heard of other people say. So had. I could actually see that, and I'm not sure if you played around with your settings, but uh, my audio was all screwed up. Like none of it was using the default audio, so that could have play could play into it. I had to go manually set the output and the input, and then deal with that stupid warning: you should not use separate audio devices, which is do- dumb. Yeah, this yeah. gotta be. I the- should use separate audio devices. <laughs> oh yeah, we we totally want you to use the same input. Like there's no way for you to actually use the same input and output anyway. Technically, because <laughs> Because right? the, M- the built-in <laughs> microphone does not also provide output that would be speakers, right? I don't what, get well, and what it, that's what it's telling you to do is use the built-in microphone and the built-in speakers. That's yeah. going to give you echo, Google. That's going to give you echo. <laughs> yeah, but we want you guys to test our, uh, you know. Noise cancellation. Yeah, our noise cancellation feature for us. Uh, on the, I was like, <laughs> yeah, but everybody else in my house doesn't need to hear the meeting either. Like, this is a thing. No. It's COVID. People are working yeah. at home. What the hell is your problem? Man, and my audio setup is so convoluted. Are you recording? Oh. <laughs> yes, I am recording. <laughs> so my audio setup is super convoluted. I found out five minutes before Kelly Co. that I was going to be using the Mac today. I'm like, okay. Um, shifting things a little bit. Got to figure this out. I have a UPMP a uh, USB-C dock plugged into the MacBook, which has my Plantronics headphones from work plugged into the US, one of the USB ports, so I didn't have to go find a USB adapter. And then uh, I have the... What was that? I just said, ah. Oh, oh, I thought you were saying you couldn't hear me because the computer locked right when you said something. <laughs> That's always uh, disconcerting. Do you ever feel like it's going to stop doing whatever it's supposed to be doing in the background when it locks? Yeah, every single time. Remember that 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 podcast episode where I forgot my pen because my computer got locked? Yeah, like, oh man, that is disconcerting. Uh, and then I've got the USB-C to USB-C ATR2100 plugged in. Ah, poor right side of this computer. I, I wonder if that's a negative thing. If I plug both of the USB-C things into the right side, I don't think it matters because, well, Calico sounded fine today. So there's some weird stuff with hard drives and multiple stuff on the same side uh, with certain. I don't know. It's a very strange bug. If you ever experience a problem like plugging in a hard drive and something else on the same side, the fix is probably going to be to just switch. You know, make sure one is on each side. It's very strange, and I think it's related to Thunderbolt drives specifically, though not uh, USB C drives. I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I so, got this dock sitting right in front of my work computer keyboard. It would be easier if I could just record on my work computer sometimes. <laughs> yeah, if it wasn't so locked down, right? Like that's the Yeah. That's the you know, the upside is if anything happens security wise, it is not your fault at all. Right. Because you don't have nope. the ability to do anything about anything, even if you know that nope. there's a zero day flaw being used in the wild right now against the software that we use, there's not a goddamn thing Mike can do about it. Nope. Can't do that guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the downside is, yeah, you, you you can't. That's not a part of your your computing device life. Yeah. Uh, side it's, note, it's just a computer here that I can't use. <laughs> yeah. Side note, we're going to have to use your Reaper recording because uh, you've broken up a little bit over the internet. Oh. Uh, 
Well, so we will have to use your Reaper recording. I've been using the Reaper recordings anyways. Uh, but not a big deal. Yeah, that tends to, like, I don't know. It's very strange. Sometimes it happens and sometimes you come through so clear that, like, it's, it's not a problem at all. Uh, speaking of microphones, though, uh, Sure, Sure has released a USB slash. So basically, they have released their version of the Audio Technica uh, bikes. Hmm. Uh, based off of the, I think it's the SMB7, I don't know, whatever that, that studio microphone a lot of people use. Uh, okay. Um, Jeff Thompson's using that SMB mic. I just found that out today. Ah, okay. Yeah. So they have released a USB and XLR compatible version. Uh, uh, well, they've released a USB uh, XLR version uh, microphone that is based off the SMB, so it's not exactly the same as the SMB, whatever the number is. I don't remember. Uh, we'll drop a link to it in the show notes at your own pay dot com slash DM 60. Fi- ah, shit. I was going to say 59. <laughs> <laughs> that, my friend, is the disadvantage to pre recording and then missing a week, which throws everything off. <laughs> Yeah, are you yep, sure? I am working on editing 59. Ah, okay. I was going to say, you should, because I was going to go look in the Google Drive folder. Uh, yeah, yourownpay.com slash DM60. Uh, we'll have links to all the stuff that we mentioned in this episode. But yeah, I did see that. It's actually 249. Uh, uh, the microphone is 249, not the episode number. Uh <laughs> Yeah, it looked interesting until I saw the price, and I was like, oh, yeah. But that's sure for you. They're going to price it a little more for the name is really what you're paying for. Yeah, I mean, they're, 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 they're they have well, good mics. I was going to say, yeah, the XLR mic that I have from them, which was the Shure Beta 87A, was a really good mic, uh, but it was XLR only. So it is nice that they have, have actually gotten into that space. Hey, look, maybe they'll push Rode out of the fucking way, though. Uh, <laughs> you know, at that price point because the road mic is around about the same price and I, I honestly don't like most people I've heard that I know use that mic like it does not sound good uh, and usually the way that goes is you hear a person you're like oh man their audio is a little you know weird strange I don't like it mm-hmm. and then you find out they're using the road and you're like oh well that, that all crazy. makes sense then now it makes sense <laughs> I mean more power to anyone who uses road I just have never had good luck with them I've never used one of their microphones, and all the audio that I've heard have made me never want to use one of their microphones. Yeah. But if you're having good luck with their microphones and you sound good, uh, more power to you. (laughs) Yeah. More power to you. If it works for you, it works for you. But yeah, like you, I've never used one, but it's because I've never liked the audio I've heard from other people that use it. So, Mike, you have the list brought up, but before we get into that list, I challenge you, sir, to... Whatever the hell Apple calls these things in activity. Uh, but I challenge you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so so are you initiating the challenge this time? Because I, I am initiating your ass. I'm like, I'm not going to challenge him. I'm going to wait till he challenges me this time. No, I am going to challenge you, sir. And I'm going to do it in the show. That's why you can hear my that's why you can hear my voiceover. And then if well, I'm going to say that we will publish the results of, of our challenge with DM sixty. Uh, because we will because it, they be will be available a week before two weeks before dm60 goes live if we're able to actually export the results if not we'll just write it down but uh if we can publish the statistics of who did what then we will also do that because i think mm. there may be a way but if not we'll just tell you who won uh compete with Michael. there we go compete we're gonna have a competition i challenge you to a competition sir sounds good compete with Michael. competition you're inviting michael to a seven-day competition Invite Michael. Button. You know, it probably would have made sense if I'd have told Mike about this ahead of time. He could have tried to get his watch and accept the challenge on the on the on the microphone. There's a notification. I just got a competition notification. Demasi is challenging me to a seven day competition. And I'm gonna hit bring it. And now it says it's on. All right. Our seven-day competition starts Tuesday. Starts Tuesday. All right. Start that is tomorrow, and let's see. That is voting day in the U.S. By the way, it is go vote. Even though you should have already voted when you hear this. 
Yep. All right. I have the confirmation on my side. Yep, that is uh, Tuesday. The day that our competition starts will be election day. So hopefully you have voted by the time you hear this because it's too late if you haven't. If you're listening now, it is too late. (laughs) If you didn't do it, it's already too late and you already know what happened. So you know things that we do not know. (laughs) (laughs) So you know what has happened that we do not know. So as we're recording this, it is November 2nd. uh, I think it was a good catch on Mike to, to point that out too, because whatever has happened, like it has happened by the time you're hearing this, but we don't know about any of that as we're recording this. So, <laughs> right. You know, don't uh, think that we're just, it. yeah, don't think that we're just blithely having a conversation and not discussing whatever the issue or issue is not happens to be. Uh, we are completely ignorant to what is going to go on uh, <laughs> as of right now. Oh, oh good times. Um, so yeah, uh, these competitions are pretty fun. I actually talked about them on Kelly Code today about how, you know, really it, it motivates you because you can close your rings all day long, but when you have other people out there competing with you, it makes you realize, hey, I actually need to go close that, that not exercise ring, but the move ring, for example. Um, you get more points for each percentage. I don't know if you ever looked and seen how these goes, but for each percentage that you complete, you get a point up to, I think it's 6,000 points per day. Neither one of us have gotten 6,000 points in one day, but it's mm-hmm. it's something to to play with. Is it 6,000 or 600? It might be 600. Maybe it is. 600. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it, that, that that is the thing. Like I was uh, actually uh, doing a... Um, Outdoor mindfulness work. meditation uh, exercise last night. Uh, oh. And I normally, like I, I do normally take some time and just sit and just kind of think and try to clear my mind or whatever anyway. Uh, but Tia was like, oh, you should do it as a workout because I had already closed two rings and I was like, well, I ain't closed my exercise ring. I think I had like three minutes or something. She's like, you should do it. What the <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Uh, but you're right. Like you- what, what I've, what I was thinking about is that we do like it does make the comp the comp the competitions do make it more interesting because now you have a reason to motivate yourself to get up and go do something and then it motivates you even more if you look at one person's uh calorie goal or whatever their move goal and like it's it's you know higher than yours and you're like man they're they're blowing past theirs they're doing like a hundred and twenty percent I'm not even getting to a hundred percent of mine like it does motivate you. But you got to be careful with blowing past yours because Google, Google, Apple decided today when I was looking at that week in review that I needed to up mine by like 70 points. So I'm like, yeah, you know, I think you're right. I will up that by like 70 points. So, yeah. Yeah. Cut it'll it. do that. if It'll do that if you consistently like blow past it, like, you know, week, day after day, like you're consistently beating it. It will recommend that. It actually recommended I lower mine because I was getting like I was getting, you know, where, where it's set now, which I think is like 380 calories or something. Uh, mm-hmm. It was getting, I was getting there or very close to there just on a regular day without really trying, but I wasn't getting to the goal that I had set. And it was like, well, maybe you should drop it down. I was like, well, well sure. Okay. All right. <laughs> so Demasi decided to put together this thing a couple of weeks ago when we were trying to figure out what project management both of us app, both of us wanted to stick with, which side note for me has been to do list. All of that hubbub about OmniFocus and Todoist and things. And I went back to Todoist because I know it and it's working. And it, I've gotten used to its idiosyncrasies, I think is how you say that's, that. That's it. You got it, man. Yeah. 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 Because... Yeah, it's just working for me. So Demasi set up a shortcut that uh, will re it prompts you. It says, what do you want to add or something like that? I don't even pay attention to the actual prompt because it puts me in an edit box. I say a couple of ideas on their own line and then I hit go and it will parse each of those ideas and add it to the proper project inside of Todoist. Now, side note, because we learned this while trying to go through this, Demasi has it set to the proper project, but if you don't go into the shortcut and actually choose that project, it won't add it 
I, I don't even know where it, oh no, it aired out. It kept giving me an error and I kept telling Demasi, I'm like, this isn't working for me. And then I found out that I had to go edit the shortcut and choose the project itself on my device. I'm not sure if that's because of a beta thing or if that's because of how iOS does it or how Todoist does it. But once you choose the actual project, uh, then it will automatically add each of these items that we want to talk about into the project itself. And then we can go through, we're going to try this for the first time looking at the project. And then each time one of us talks about something, the other one will probably complete it off in the to do us project. And we should theoretically have a, well, I think we have yeah 13 different things right now in the project to talk to people about. We may or may not get to all of them, but it's the things that both of us have talked about saying, Hey, we should talk about that on the show. And then we're like, okay, we'll go put it in the Google Doc. And then guess what? It never makes it to the Google Doc. So never, man, never. Hopefully it, this shortcut will help us. Yeah, the, the Google Doc is, the frustration for me at least with the Google Doc is I have to actually go open Docs. Like there's mm-hmm. no way that I have discovered uh, to write something in drafts, for example, uh, and then run an action that will append this to the doc that we're using. Um, I think the only way to possibly do that would to be make it a TXT file, but then I think as soon as you open it up in docs, it converts it back to a doc. I don't know. It's very strange and frustrating. So yeah, this, this has actually been working. Uh, I'm going to also, um, most likely add this to a, uh, a, a menu shortcut that i'm going to run from my home screen so it can be like quickly add you know quick add or whatever uh to to do is like you i think i am going to stick with to do is there's some interesting things about OmniFocus, some inter- interesting ideas that i had for solving some of my problems uh moving back to OmniFocus. but there there's one big one that there's no way for me to solve it with OmniFocus, and that is a shared project and if i need to keep to do is around to do shared projects anyway it makes absolutely no sense for me to be jumping back and forth between the two task management systems uh, because I'm not in an environment where my to do is usage is 100 percent restricted to work and then to do it you know omnifocus could be my personal thing like some people you know their their business pays for to do it right so they use to do it for everything at work and then you know maybe it makes sense for them to move over and use omnifocus for their own stuff because then they're out of the work app as well uh that's not my case like i pay for to do is for me and it, it, yeah it just makes sense so do you get notified when i mark items complete uh, I should. Um, I am not probably going to get notified at the moment because I have everything on oh. not disturb. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Okay, I was going to say because I just marked two items complete because we touched on them that was in the project. So I wasn't sure if you would have gotten notifications, but you're right. Since you have do not disturb on, which I should, but I don't. So now I'm going to do it while we're sitting here talking about it because, yeah, we all know how phone calls can happen. <laughs> one interesting thing that i did think about with omnifocus to solve the problem and i'm throwing this out there in case anybody else is is listening and, and uh, wants to you know try to do some some web automation with omnifocus which is very limited at the moment uh one thought i had was and mike i think mike put me on this path if i remember correctly mike mentioned this and then i took it and like oh actually i could go this route is uh, a combination of uh, using push cuts and IFTTT, I think, is what I started working on, at least. Uh, you could use Zapier and several other things, but IFTTT was the thing that I settled on. And it was because what I was thinking of doing is, let's say an email comes in and I want to, well, let's pick something different. Let's say I get a notification from a website that someone has submitted a support ticket. Right. And Mm -hmm. I want to add that to a project. Uh, Well, with OmniFocus, the way that I was thinking about solving that sort of problem is have the notification from uh, Gravity Forms uh, using the webhook. I wouldn't actually need IFTTT in this case. Uh, Send a webhook request to uh, my pushcut webhook URL. 
uh, which would then trigger a notification and push cut. And my options for my push cut menu would be uh, to pick a project that I wanted to add this, you know, this thing to or whatever. Just hit a button like, yes, add it to this project or no, you know, ignore it or whatever, because it could be somebody spam. Uh, and I was like, that that is a cool way to solve that problem, uh, which neatly gets around one of my issues of switching to OmniFocus, which is, you know, to do is just have hooks in the web. APIs everywhere for you to do things like that and OmniFocus does not uh, but like I said for me ultimately it came back to the chair projects like I can't delete um, to do is off my phone or out of my life uh, because I have shared projects going on mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and for me to do is what brought me back to it was twofold number one Demasi sent me that shortcut and I'm like well I guess that makes that decision <laughs> <laughs> And number two, I, I, I'm comfortable in it. And as I said, I've been using Todoist for a while now. It's been Almost three over, years. yeah, I was going to say it's been over two years. It's been, it's been long enough. So, uh, that just sucked me back in and, and, and here's the other thing that, that was the camel that broke the, or the straw that broke the camel's back, the camel that broke the straw's back. Huh? Yeah. Getting some words mixed up there. Uh, I was paying a couple of bills, uh, late last month and I'm like, Oh, I got everything paid. Well, then Mallory got a phone call from our car loan place and it goes, Hey, you need to give us a call. And I looked at the calendar and it was the 29th, the day after their, their grace period that they offer us. And I'm like, well, shit, there's a $15 late fee. And obviously my current setup project of working out of my brain to pay all the bills isn't working. It wasn't that I didn't want to pay the car bill or that we couldn't afford it. It just literally slipped my mind. And I'm like, well, I got enough bills. I've got enough things that are in to do us right now that I have not found a reliable way to switch them to OmniFocus, so I am sticking with Todoist. And then I jumped in there and paid like three other bills that I forgot to. So, mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> stick to Todoist. I thought it was weird. I'm like, man, we have more money this month, and I didn't work any overtime. <laughs> yeah. Anytime I end up with extra money, I'm always suspicious. It's like, wait a minute. Uh, yeah. What, yeah. What did I what's forget to pay? Not paid. <laughs> Yeah, what what's not paid uh, is always the question. Yeah, I, I think honestly, having been away from me too, from being away from OmniFocus for so long, there's like a learning curve there as well because like I don't remember how to do certain things or or to do is has spoiled me with certain features and it's like well how do I do that in OmniFocus like you know natural language input for a date or how do I tell it that I want this date that I'm giving you in the way that it wants me to give it to it. I want that to be my deferred date, not the due date or, or vice versa. Right. I want it to be the due date, not the deferred date. Uh, mm-hmm. I think another thing that I'm going to try to do with to do is, is get away from putting due dates on things that don't have hard due dates. Ah. Uh, and instead start using the due date feature uh, in some combination of reminders to to prompt me to get started on a on a project or a task versus, you know, a, a due date being a hard thing. Because that label thing the guy was doing on Reddit, like, no, <laughs> just no. <laughs> and, you know, not having due dates is because I have always tried to put a due date on something and that can that can restrict you. Uh for getting something actually done. And this whole project with us, uh, I need to go in and delete a couple of projects because apparently I have three DM projects, DM show projects, which isn't three, good, but that's besides two or three. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's only two anyways, but having the, the list of tasks in this project, they don't show up anywhere else unless I'm looking at them. And, and that's kind of ultimately what I really wanted was to only see things when they're due or to only see things when I'm in the context of phone calls or paying bills. And, and with bills, it's not an issue because I can just open the bills label that I have, but like, that's, that's, I think ultimately yeah. one of the things i wanted and now i'm actually using it that way so yeah to do is just it won out yeah mostly share projects OmniFocus. if you fix the share projects thing man like geez you know we might have actually stayed over there we could do that yeah, yeah. you've had plenty like, of time to fix that though omni group uh, 
yeah, it might be more complicated than we think it is, though. I imagine that it probably is, at least, because of the way that they do the encrypted databases. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And they, they already were so far down the road on that path of everybody's OmniFocus is their own OmniFocus. Uh, that, yeah, breaking that out might be a little bit more difficult than we think it is. Uh, and you don't want to lose data. That's the big thing. And I, I'm imagining that is what's the hold up is, is like, there, there's no way to do this securely. Uh, okay. Now I just got a notification that you, oh, and my watch went off. So I guess everything is not on do not disturb. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, the share projects thing is the thing that, that kind of whipped it for me. There is a item that we had in here. John. You can go ahead and check that off too. Uh, and about, alternative shared project management systems because I just didn't find anything that made any sense that I was even vaguely interested in trying. Um, I already marked that off. Uh, oh. me, me and Mike no, uh, uh, me and Mike have used most of the stuff already before we settled on Todoist, uh, before he settled on Todoist for himself. The and only one I never used was Microsoft To Do. <sighs> yeah, fuck that. I've I've heard a lot of blind people saying to do is the best thing. I just never got into that. Um, so yeah, I, I I haven't I haven't looked at it either. Uh, I think partially because I, I don't know I tend to just steer away from Microsoft apps, and it's not so much that I necessarily have. Like I I am a fan of Microsoft and what they have been doing for the past few years. Uh, honestly, it's just I I feel like all the time that their software tends to be more geared towards people in a corporate environment and that are also sort of like Apple in a, in a, to an extent where if you're not using all stuff Microsoft, like you lose a lot of benefits. Uh, you're, right. you're constantly fighting against the system uh, because you're not, you know, using Word or you're not using OneDrive or whatever. So like you're constantly fighting with that system that wants you to be using all of those things. So, uh, speaking of systems and ecosystems and, and keeping yourself locked in, that was a horrible transition. <laughs> <laughs> horrible transition. Say, hey, Demasi, how's your Google experience on your iPhone going for you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Google, my Google experiment on iOS. So I think we talked about this on the show. But if we didn't, just to recap for anybody that missed whatever DM episode it may have been on, uh, I decided with iOS 14 that once it came out of beta and the release was out, that I was going to attempt to switch to using all Google applications where it made sense. Uh, so this would be using uh, Gmail for my default mail app, using Chrome for my default browser. This obviously fell apart very quickly because I did not use Google Calendar as my calendar app. Uh, <laughs> that is what happened. Uh, I did also install Google Search and started using Google Search uh, more. I had the Google Assistant installed and I intended on setting it up to do the back tap to launch the Google Assistant and then having the uh, home button for Siri. Uh, and I never quite got around to doing that. But. Ultimately, I wanted to set the default apps that I could change to be Google apps. Um, there's some things I didn't obviously like. Well, maps, I probably would have tried maps to that I don't actually have a need for maps because I don't go anywhere. Uh, it went OK. Uh, I have some some complaints about Chrome on iOS in general. The chief among which is the fact that when I tap on the URL field, uh, it does not automatically select the text in the url field so you have to manually clear or select all and delete before you can start typing a new url i know it's a small thing some people may be like oh that's not a big deal just you know there's a clear text button you know that you can flick to yep but every other browser on ios not just safari but firefox firefox focus uh brave uh, all the other browsers on ios i've ever used uh behave in this way you tap on the even the computer behaves this way if i use command l to jump to the location bar in a web browser on my computer like i i it the text is automatically selected uh so that was annoying the refresh button was hidden behind the menu uh could be that you could drag that out and put it somewhere on the actual toolbar in chrome but that was annoying when i discovered that uh but behavior of chrome itself was fine uh there's still some bugs in ios when it comes to setting a default browser so if you're inside of 
um, some apps and you tap on a link, it opens, still opens up in a Safari web view. So uh, you lose the benefits of having Chrome as your default browser and your cookies and being logged in in places. Uh, Gmail, I am kind of still using, uh, even though I'm going to switch back to the main mail app. But Gmail, I'm still kind of using. Uh, it searches better. It searches way better in Gmail than it is in mail. Um, mm-hmm. But there are some. Go ahead. And it seems like a, a stream. Uh, to me, it seems slightly more snappy in Gmail to go through your messages. But like, well, not necessarily like you because you haven't made the transition yet. I have switched back over to the mail app. I think because I do have some things in iCloud email. And now that I'm actually checking that email on a regular basis, uh, I just use the native mail app. But I, I do play with the Gmail app here and there. Uh, so tip, you can add IMAP accounts to Gmail, to the Gmail app also. So it's not just restricted to your Google accounts. Uh, and I think by default, they have iCloud as a provider. So you can just tap iCloud and it will, you know, fill in all the server stuff. And all you have to do is just log in. Uh, that's why I, uh, one need time use password that, that mine's actually more than one time use, but it's, uh, password. yeah. I mean, I just save those in one password on the thing at a, there's a quick tip for you. If you have a one-time application password from a service like iCloud or any other thing that you have two-factor on, uh, save it in one password or in your password manager if it allows you to independently add, you know, items. Uh, I just add it to the same login that it belongs to and just label it like, you know, there's the Fantastical iCloud one-time password dilly. Uh, so, and, it, and I just use it on both platforms to get into Fantastical. Or add, you know, my, you know, iCloud account into Fantastical. Uh, yeah, G- Gmail does feel snappier in some ways. There's a couple of things I don't like. Uh, one of which is, I, and, and some of it is just me not having figured stuff out. But one thing I haven't figured out and I wish I was able to do is I do miss the ability in the default mail app to just pull down from the top of the list and have it automatically refresh. Like I haven't figured out how to make Gmail refresh, like go check mail again because uh, we all do it. You, you're you waiting on an email because you just did a thing. You just did an action on a website that is going to require email. You go open your mail app and it's not there yet. And it's like, OK, you wait for a second then you want to refresh your mail. Uh, and I have not figured out how to do that in the Gmail app. I, I haven't tried the refresh in Gmail yet, though. But in mail, it's just three finger flick down in a refresh. Yeah, yeah, and that does not work in in Gmail. And I've tried like you know double tap and hold, and then quickly flick down, uh, and that doesn't seem to work either. Uh, so, long story short, you tried it, but you're going to go back to Apple Apps. Is that correct for the most part? Yeah, most likely. Uh, probably go back to mail. Uh, I did go back to Safari already. Uh, swapped out my dock applications and went and changed. I actually deleted Chrome off my phone. Good transition. So, Demasi, what do you have in your dock? And then I can run through mine. Uh, I currently have two applications in my dock. Uh, Safari and Timery. Interesting. I would have figured drafts would have been somewhere down there. So so I have a widget stack for drafts on my uh, first home screen. Uh, and the primary widget that's showing that stack is actually one of those. Is, is, I don't have it automatically switching. It's just static. So like I can switch it when I want to switch it. And the one that's always showing is add new draft. So I just tap that and it launches me into a new draft. Uh, the other widget that are in that stack are all drafts widgets so one takes me to you know i have two to take me to separate workspaces uh and one that shows something i don't remember what it shows uh but yes i just use the widget now so we need to flesh out your widget usage in a minute uh for me i have the phone on the bottom left corner i have safari then i have todoist and then i have drafts uh, on my dock and Todoist and drafts just moved there full time last night. 
Uh, I used to have phone Safari mail messages, but then I realized that you know that's that's kind of boring. Uh, everyone probably probably not everyone, <laughs> but you know a, a lot of people probably have that scenario. And uh, I so I moved messages up to the top right corner of home screen one, and then uh, it comes out to be about. Uh, let me find it. See, and that's the thing. Uh, mail, mail is uh, straight up from Safari, uh, and then I have a DM show topic on the main screen. And for some reason, I have TV on the main screen. Not quite sure why, because I never use it. But uh, so that's that's all that's on my home screen, and it's it's working out for me for now. The only widget I'm using is the battery widget, which is kind of nice. If you didn't know, it'll give you your phone's battery widget. It gives me my bat my watch's battery, mm-hmm. and then it gives me these cheap Walmart Bluetooth headphones batteries. Mm-hmm. Uh, my understanding is if you use AirPods, it'll give you each of the AirPod battery levels in the case i've never experienced that uh so the battery which is a pretty cool widget i'm i'm intrigued to hear how else you're using widgets yeah so i i have uh and the funny thing i didn't really play with widgets too much throughout the beta um mostly because all i had was apple stuff and they were still a little buggy uh so on one i'm still making use of the today screen uh yeah, the one that you get when you swipe over from the lock screen or from your first home screen. Uh, what well, used on to that, be page one, but now that they fixed iOS 14, is like page zero. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that one. Uh, and on that one, and I have switched that one with the exception of one widget that's all the way at the bottom. Uh, I have switched all the widgets that I do have on the Today screen uh, to be the newer Apple widgets. You can still add old widgets uh, if the app still has them uh, on that screen as well. Uh, but on that screen I have so on my today view screen the top left widget uh, is the battery widget uh, and I have it there because also when I'm if I just pick up the phone and, and wake it up I can swipe over and still see the battery level for everything too so that's why I don't have it on my main home screen uh, wait from the lock screen you can do that yeah so if you go to your lock screen so if you lock your phone all right, I'm going to wake it up and if I just do a three finger flick right, it takes me over to the today view and I can see my huh. batteries with it. I did not realize that. Looks like I'm going to have to rearrange some things, I think. <laughs> uh, so I'll put this, I think it's a small battery widget uh, is on the left. And then on the right, to the right of that, uh, I have a uh, world clock widget. Uh, and it's just a default Apple uh, world clock that you have to customize. But I have, uh, and on that world clock widget, I have a couple of different places. One of which is Portland, because I think Portland is the closest place to you, Mike, that is a big city. Yeah. Uh, and of course, I, I mean, there's uh, a few, but yeah, that would be the biggest, the closest biggest city. Uh, yeah, it's the closest one that I knew was somewhat reasonably close to you. Like, uh, you know, I wasn't well on the other side of the, you know, like it wasn't L.A. Uh, right. So I put Portland there. I have uh, uh, Australia, U.K., Eastern Time uh, listed there as well. That's so I could just quickly see what time it is in, in, in people's uh, time zone. So because sometimes I forget. Uh, I have the Timory widget there, although that's just there temporarily. Uh, that is on the second row. And to the right of that, I have a shortcuts widget that basically gives me a couple of couple of shortcuts that I run uh, not too frequently. Uh, and let's see what else is on the today view. Oh, this is actually a small workflow widget that runs the to uh the dm show uh topic so it just gives me one shortcut okay and it runs a dm show topic that i should actually move to my home screen though uh and then on my home screen 
uh, as I mentioned, my top left widget. And right now, this is kind of bare because I only have like the two widget stats because I'm still kind of playing around with different widgets and taking them on, putting them off. And then there's also uh, the plan for making some more uh, menu based shortcuts to launch into different uh, spots and applications that I want to add. Uh, tip though, if you use the shortcut widget, whether it's the small, medium, or the large one, I think the smaller, the medium are kind of the best ones uh space wise uh but if you run a shortcut from one of those you do not have it does not have to open shortcuts like if it doesn't require shortcuts to open it does not have to open shortcuts where it's just you know adding the shortcut to your home screen normally uh will open shortcuts in the background uh there's my drafts widget and as i said i have a uh uh one of the widgets in this is this is actually a stack so one of those widgets opens up uh, my scratch uh, pad workspace and drafts and what's usually in that space is that's where things go that I dictate into my watch. That's where uh, the little quick add uh, drafts action that's on, on the share sheet uh, mm -hmm. sends things mm -hmm. that. So, so I go in and kind of check what I've been adding recently and clean it up, save it, delete it, do whatever I need to do with it. Uh, the other uh, shortcut opens up. I mean, the other one of the other widgets in that stack for drafts opens up my my DMD workspace, which is mostly where I've just been keeping notes on stuff that I need to do. So, how do you switch between those those widget stack? Oh, uh, so there's a couple of ways you can do it. Uh, if you touch a widget and then flick down with one finger, uh, you get the option to go to next widget, previous widget. And then you'll get to the edit mode option. Uh, so if you go to, you know, like previous widget and double tap, uh, it'll take you back to the previous widget in that stack, uh, which is a new draft. Um, and then you can do a three finger. If you t also, if you set focus on a widget, you can do a three finger flick up uh, or flick right. down. And that will also change it. That's slightly annoying because sometimes I want to bring up uh, spotlight. And I'm on a widget, so then it just <laughs> rotates through the widget. Yeah. Uh, but another tip for everybody listening, because I don't remember this. I know this did not work in iOS 12. I'm pretty certain it did not work in iOS 13. Uh, but now, if you find yourself in the situation, I mean, where you got a bunch of widgets on your home screen and you're trying to do a three finger flick down to go to spotlight and it just rotates your widgets. If you touch the uh, item picker for your page, page switcher you can now do a three finger flick down from there uh and it'll bring up spotlight that did not used to work it still does not work if you're in the dock okay uh but that's how you switch between widgets uh my second widget stack on the screen is at the top right and it is also a small widget uh stack i have carrot weather uh and carrot is showing me the current weather so that changes kind of throughout the day as the weather changes so it's the temperature you know stuff like that it's, it's actually really well done uh i have a fantastic hour widget this widget also this widget stack is dynamic so like it changes by itself so like you know if i have an event coming up in i guess like maybe the next 30 minutes or something it will be showing me the fantastic hour thing uh but the fantastic hour widget I was going to say, it'll show you the Fantastico widget over the Carrot Weather widget because it knows you're interested in your, in your yeah. next event more. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the Fantastico widget that I'm using is the uh, upcoming event. Uh, I think so. It just shows me like one event that's up next or whatever. Uh, I also have a Todoist widget. Uh, there and one of those is add new item and then another one of those in that stack uh, shows me the task list from uh, one of my tasks one of my projects uh, uh, DTC for Demasi Thomas Consultant just whatever crap I need to be doing over there uh, and there's also an OmniFocus widget there mostly because I'm on the beta of OmniFocus and I was trying to use OmniFocus and I want to see how their widgets worked uh, it's okay. There's nothing to write home about. Uh, and that's it. And then, like I said, on the dock, I just have, right now, I have Safari and uh, Time Memory. Okay. Okay. That's intriguing. I, I And see, 
We both have our phones set up differently, but they work for our workflow. So if you're listening and you're interested in sharing what you or how your phone is set up, head on over to your own pay.com slash DM 60 and leave a comment. And I might actually approve it slash not see it. We'll see. Uh, yeah. or, or drop us a message on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, drop us a message on Twitter, man. That's probably the best way. I was going to make another suggestion. That. Yeah, <laughs> definitely more likely to see it if you send it to Twitter. I was going to make another suggestion, but I may probably will not have it all put that in place by the time this publishes. So it's not how people looking for stuff that does not exist. So the uh, I, I, I've got a couple of other things on this to doist uh, project, but. For me, to loop it back to the beginning of the episode, uh, I want to give you a quick rundown of what I've got on my watch face because that's the next uh, device that I'm connected with. In the top left-hand corner, I have a... So I'm using the modular uh, watch face. So in the top left-hand corner, I have a timer complication that will either, number one, show me the last timer that I ran. So right now it says timer 10 minutes. Or if I'm currently running a timer, it'll give me the amount of time that's left on that timer. Uh, mainly use that for breaks from work or for lunch. Uh, or sometimes when I'm cooking, I'll use that. Not too often. I actually tend to use Siri more often when I'm cooking to set a timer because it's the only thing she can do, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, in the top right corner, I have a the I mean, current sound time. <laughs> I have the current time in the top right corner. Uh, I think that comes in modular for everyone. And then my bottom row, what is that one in the bottom left? Oh, and the and my bottom row is next event on the bottom left corner. In the middle, I have my uh, fitness rings, and then on the bottom right, I have heart rate, so I can check heart rate quickly as well. So pretty pretty basic. Uh, and then in my dock on my watch, I don't have it set to keep any specific apps there. It's just the last apps that I've I've opened from the watch, which isn't really that many, actually, surprisingly. Uh, so that's that's my watch face. Uh, I changed my doctor be fixed app because some it, this may have changed. It's possible it has changed to a certain extent, but in the early days of the watch, you would have to uh, if you wanted background updates to work for apps like Carrot and Fantastic Hour, you would have to have them in the dock. Uh, mm, I do remember those days. <laughs> may I don't still think be it's like so that. much that the that way actually. Yeah, it might actually be not so much that way but you know old habits and no information to the contrary either uh although the top app on my dock does rotate by itself so whatever i most recently opened will be at the very top of the dock regardless of that setting uh my watch face is just a siri face all i have is the draft widget at the top left uh and i currently have just press record at the top right uh that top right position tends to change uh depending on what i'm testing or playing with uh and then the siri face itself just shows what it decides it thinks you want to see uh sometimes useful sometimes not but typically i can see my activity ring so uh what i've done move wise stand wise and exercise minutes uh it will typically show me fantastic how the next event is coming up as that that shows up uh, any major changes in weather for care? Like I'll get a card. Uh, I'll get a card every morning that shows me the weather, uh, the, the projected weather for the day. Uh, and then if there's anything significant that happens uh, throughout the day with the weather, I'll usually get a get that card to show up on that face. It's quite interesting. I wish you could control a little bit more as to what things stay static on that screen, but it, it has been working pretty well for me for the most part. Uh, there are some apps that don't show up at all that give you the option to turn them on. Uh, Deliveries is an app that recently started showing up for me. So like now I can see that a order of LED bulbs I have ordered is uh, in transit. Uh, yeah. And never got to do is to show up on that screen, but then to be honest, I don't open to do is on my watch all that often. Uh, which is a question, Mark. Did you actually use to do is on the watch at all? Nope. 
Nope. Yeah, neither do I. Not at all. Not even to add tasks to 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 do list. I, nope. <laughs> I don't know why. I just never have. So I also forgot about the big complication, like the the biggest one on that uh, on my watch face, which for me just shows the weather. Which I'm using the native weather app i'm not using carrot weather although i, need, I should reinstall carrot weather because i need a little, a little snark in my wife in my in my i need a little snark in my life it's not like my wife gives me enough snark anyways is what i was trying to say with that sentence what God. Like, <laughs> well, right. shots fired <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, yeah but i've been on a siri face for a while it is it, it is reasonably okay i think it would sp- most likely stay in my rotational faces. Uh, I haven't really done anything to my other faces in a while because I'm intending on getting a new watch at some point uh, shortly. And it's my understanding that the faces on the newer watch, so the Series 4 and newer with the with the bigger screens, uh, the layouts are a little bit different. So like I, th- I know that there are faces that are on those watches that are not available to me, period. But I think the complications are a little bit different as well. So uh, I think while it would bring my complications set up on, say, the utility face over to a new watch, it wouldn't necessarily have them in the same place. One thing that we have never talked about on the DM show, to the best of my knowledge, and if some if someone knows of it, quote me the the episode number or something but i don't think we've ever talked about technology in the kitchen uh which is conversations demasi and i have had quite regularly offline like when we're not recording and we have those full conversations and then we're like man that would have been a great con <laughs> <laughs> which actually surprisingly happens a lot more than people might think so uh demasi i'll give you a quick rundown of the gadgets we have in our kitchen i'm not sure if you're using any of them and then i can answer any questions you have about them because uh, we've kind of saved this conversation for the show we currently have a Keurig coffee machine. Uh, I don't know if I count that as a as a technical gadget, but I will in this case. And then we have a Instapot. It's the eight quart version of it. And then we have a uh, not really accessible air fryer, but I can still use it or guide other people to use it. And then we of course have a microwave. And then that's that's our gadgets in our kitchen right now. That could change in the near future because I kind of want to get a KitchenAid. Uh, haven't yet, but that is next on my list. But that 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 requires Christmas to be over and Michael to save a little bit of money after Christmas. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I'm thinking about a sous vide machine. Uh, Ooh, something I would like Ooh. to get. Uh, yeah, I got questions about this uh this Instapot man because we we we've talked about it offline, but it, for my edification for things that I don't know as well as uh you know people listening who are interested in an Instapot and not sure if it's a thing to buy. So, what do you find the Instapot good for? Couple of things. Uh, so we make a pork chop rice meal in it. So long story short, what what I really like about the Instapot is you can throw all your ingredients in there and either slow cook it if that's what you want to do. You can pressure cook it, or you can uh, even saute things uh, that need to. For example, with our pork chop meal that we make, the steps are that you season the pork chops. Typically, they're boneless pork chops. Then you throw them in on the saute feature with a little bit of oil or butter in the bottom, and you pretty much brown up each side for about three minutes, and then you... Uh, pull the inner pot out and you rinse that out so that way you don't get the dreaded burn warning which is a warning that the instapot will give you if it thinks that something is stuck to the bottom and that it's burning and then you add uh, one to three cups of white rice with the equivalent amount of either water or chicken broth works better. And then a can or two of cream of celery soup or cream of mushroom soup works. You And you have the pork chops on the bottom. You throw the lid on top and then you set it to high pressure for 15 minutes. And then you let it naturally release once it hits that 15 minutes of high pressure uh, for about 10 minutes. And the rice comes out perfectly it's stuck to the pork chops and it's it's pretty much one meal in one Mm. Uh, and then there's a basket that comes with the instapot that we have that i put eggs in and i will pressure cook hard boil egg 
eggs for about six minutes. They come out perfectly. And then uh, I take the, I use tongs and I take the hard boiled eggs and I drop them into an ice bath. So that way they stop cooking right away. And then I can quickly have a couple of hard boiled eggs for breakfast if that's something I wanted. Uh, Not what I typically have, but it is an option. Uh, And then the Instapot also, supposedly you can make like Instapot cheesecake. I've never done that, but but I've read some recipes (laughs) where people have done that. Well, or, look, man, uh, people do stuff with microwaves all the time that I don't think should even be allowed. So yeah, just because <laughs> somebody did it doesn't mean you should do it. Right. Or like I've made, uh, I really like making chicken in the Instapot because it comes out very moist. Uh, some people don't like that word. Side note. I don't know if you knew that. The, the mm. word moist drives some people crazy. Uh, and so moist. I re- <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I really like the Instapot for that. Um, and, you know, a little soy sauce goes a long ways in the Instapot with flavoring things. Just saying. Hmm. Yeah. yeah I've, I've been. So initially I was not interested because when it first came out and it was such a big hype. Uh, one, my yep. experience has been oftentimes when things are that big of a hype, they tend not to live up to the expectations or at least my expectations anyway. Secondly, everybody that I knew was using it that was happy about it could not cook. So <laughs> I started feeling like eh, maybe it's one of those things for people who don't know how to cook. Right. Like it's, it's I could get it and use it, but it's not something to invest money in to go into my kitchen because I actually know how to cook. There's these people that don't know how to cook. Like one very important step in your pork chop meal that you mentioned is like season the pork chops. Yeah. You know, I won't call any names. And if one of the people related to this, here's this. Whatever, man. The shit is stupid. I'm going to tell you right now. It was stupid. You buy some meat. It's you stick it in the freezer. You freeze it. <laughs> When you get ready to cook it in your Instapot, you don't just take it out of the freezer and throw it in the Instapot while it still froze. It's not how this works. Now, I have read some people can go from freezer to to uh, table uh, in a matter of, of like half hour. For me, that does not work because I need some seasoning on my shit and you can't season frozen meat. <laughs> you also can't wash frozen meat. Yes. Yes, there's uh, that too. <laughs> you know, that that's the like the seasoning part, yeah, that's that's a preference, right? I'm like you, like I, I would not, you know, want something not seasoned, but you know, one step missed in this process before you froze your meat is that you didn't wash it. Uh yeah. Like, you know, I have done that and I do that. That's something I actually want to get is a vacuum sealer. Uh because I do, do find that seasoning like you get, you know, a pack of meat, you got several pieces in there. It's like, well, we can break this up because we're not gonna eat, you know, all of this in one meal and break it up. Uh, and the last time I did this, that we came from Costco, uh, I actually seasoned some meat first, like washed it, seasoned it, uh, and put it in freezer Ziploc bags, uh, squeezed as much air out of it as I could possibly get out of it, uh, and stuck them in the freezer. And I would say about a week ago, I pulled some of those steaks out and grilled them and they were, man, it was excellent. And all I had to do was just wait for them to thaw out before I cooked them because I didn't have to wash and season or do any of that. It's like vacuum sealer goes on the list. Yes, yes, yes. Mallory's been trying to talk me into one and th- we've just never found them on a good enough deal because I don't want to spend three or four. Yeah, days. that's the thing, right? Like, they're, you know, to get one that you feel like, at least for me, like to get one that I feel like is actually good quality because I've seen cheap vacuum sealers, but I, it feels like to me that thing's going to break or not do its job right or something. Or it's going to leave that little tiny pinhole in that, that makes oh, all the difference. Bitch. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. Don't say that, Mike. Oh, oh God. Oh, I'll just look. Look, you buy freezer bags, people. If you can't get a vacuum yes. sealer, buy freezer bag. Make sure that they're freezer bags, not just Ziploc bags. Freezer bags, right? And put your stuff in it. And what I do is I take the top of the bag and I just fold it over the side and then press all the air out, then zip it, right? If there's any air, it's better than a pin. It won't get out and nothing else will get in. That's the point. Uh, so that's my, uh, that's my El Cheapo, uh, vacuum sealer. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> and then we uh, use the Traeger smoker too. Almost, almost every day. Oh man, geez. I don't talk about that freaking smoker. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I remember when I heard them talking about that smoker on, uh, Mac break weekly. And I was like, wait, I know somebody that has, I think Mike has this thing. Wait, Mike has a thousand dollar grill. What the fuck? Mike, is this the thing you got? 
Yeah. 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 It was given to it us. Is. I was like, oh. oh. <laughs> like Mike said this. Like I, I didn't even get around to like, Mike, you paid a thousand bucks for this shit? Like I didn't even get to that. Mike's like, yeah, we got one. It was given to us. Like just, he qualified that very quickly. Like, nope, it was given yes. to us. <laughs> And it is not the Wi-Fi one. So I don't know if the Wi-Fi app is accessible. The Traeger does make a more expensive one. Ours is, has a switch on the front of it and a knob. And once you know the settings for the knob, like where you need to turn the knob to, it's pretty straightforward. But yeah, it was it was given to us. <laughs> so this is actually a smoker, though it's not like a a grill. Like it's not for cooking stuff at high heat. It's for for. It, or it does, it it do does both? both. Okay. It does both. So you you have a smoke setting that you can put things on and it will slowly drip the pellets into the burner and then, uh, well, into the fire. And then it will just keep smoking it at that, that low level. But you can get it as high as I think it's 400 uh, for grilling things too. Uh, there's a link uh, to... Uh TechCrunch, uh, Matthew Panzerino wrote an article about this outdoor uh, steak grill that gets to like 1500 degrees. I'm going to drop a link in the show notes to it. Uh, yeah, It's not a thing that I will buy simply because I don't tend to really cook my meat that fast. I, I tend to kind of slow cook uh, yeah. a lot of the stuff that I cook anyway on the grill. But, you know, if money was no object, like, you know, just wasn't a problem whatsoever, I'd probably buy it. Uh, Right, right. You know, but there's a lot of just stuff. Just to see how well cooking meat that fast. I don't know if I would like meat that cooked. Although, if it could do medium rare, then then we'd be good. Yeah, it seems like it would take a lot. And I think he says this in the article. Like, it, it you know, it takes, it's going to take you a little trial and error with it to, to get your steak to come out the way you want your meat to come out every single time. Like, you know, so if you like it medium rare. Like, I like mine kind of medium rare. Mm, wait. No, medium well is how I would actually describe where I like mine. So little, little less rary, uh, little pink, like just, just you know, little pink in the middle, a uh, little pink. But I like the outside of it to be seared. So the way that I do that when I'm when I grill a steak is I will sit the steak on top of the fire for what would be the um, length on both sides, like uh, each side. I give it about as much time as somebody would cook it if they were cooking a steak for someone that wanted it almost rare. Like, so like maybe two minutes on each side, that gives me that nice sear on the outside of it. Then I move it off to heat, uh, and let it slow cook. Ah, now have you seen or tried one of these big green eggs? I think is what they're called. I have seen one. Uh, I have not tried one cause they're also very expensive. Yes. yes uh, they are. <laughs> uh, and I honestly, like, I personally, so I, I don't know anything about I just know I saw one. I was like, oh, okay, now I see why they call it a big green egg, because uh, it looks like a big <laughs> green egg. Uh, I don't think I would buy one at this point. I've heard over the years since they've been out, several people have said that there is cracked, like the, mm. the, the the casing around it has cracked. And I would imagine that's probably because they use it a lot. And I use my, so the grill that I have right now is just your, your old traditional, you know, barrel style grill. Uh right. But I've had this grill for almost 12 years. Uh, and you use it every day. Maybe not every day, but. <laughs> at least once a week, man. At least once yeah. a week. Uh, yeah. Now, what I tend to do also, too, and the reason I don't use it every day is because I do, what I do tend to do is, like, cook a lot of meat. Like, so I'll cook, you know, chicken leg quarters or something like that. You know, I tend to cook, like, you know, a couple of different types of meat. And it's enough meat for us to make meals out of the meat for, you know, about a week. So all we have to do is go in and put together some sides or something like that, which has made things uh, significantly easier with uh, virtual school. Uh, yeah. But that's the only reason I don't use it every day uh, is because one is, is big. Like I could go cook something small and quick on there with a little bit of charcoal, but, eh, you know, it just makes more sense to slow cook a lot of stuff uh, stored in the refrigerator. And then I have meat. Uh, good meat like you know i'm not eating chicken nuggets. yes uh, so I don't there, so. <laughs> now with the traeger i think with the traeger i probably would be more inclined to use that on a on a daily or, or you know almost daily basis just because of the way it's designed because my understanding is like there, there's no fuel of anything on your side is just you know put in the pellets and set it the way you want it to cook it and then you know going about your business don't let it burn up 
You got it pretty well. And uh, you do have to plug it in because the electricity does power the fan, which drives the pellets down into the burner. And it pushes a little bit of air through to help ignite the flame initially. But yeah, it's it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, I would like to have one. So Traeger, anybody from Traeger, if you're listening, like you know, if you want one of us uh, to you know test the accessibility S- of send your Wi-Fi app. a Wi-Fi version. Yeah, if you want to <laughs> test the accessibility of your Wi-Fi app? Like, you know, we'll happily I'll happily do it. Uh, yeah, we use yeah. it every day. <laughs> we we might even get get Tia or the kids on to to tell us how the food came out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. One other thing you mentioned, so the Instapot. I, I may end up picking up an Instapot. If you get it, especially if you have a household of four or more, go with the eight core. Pay that. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to ask you. Like, yeah, that's what I was going to yeah. ask you. It's like, what is the? You said you got the eight core. Uh, so we had the six core, and then I broke it. I dropped the lid, and w- the one of the pins popped out. And I knew that I was throwing something away that was important. But I, re- I'm like, I don't know what this pin goes to, so I think I'm just going to throw it away. That was dumb, Michael, because then all of a sudden, apparently, we can buy them for ten dollars, but I couldn't get it to seal. Uh, on the six quart and court, so we ended up getting the eight quart, and honestly, I'm a lot happier with that one because you can you can do like four four six I think six actually uh, of the pork chops in that meal that I mentioned. Uh, I can easily get six to eight eggs. No, I do not eat six to eight hard boiled eggs to myself, but I do have two young men that, that will eat them too. Uh, and so you can easily get a lot more in the six or in the eight quart than the six quart. Two quarts doesn't sound like a lot, but it adds up pretty fast. Hmm. Yeah. I will, uh, probably look at getting one of those. Cause that, that's the thing I wanted is to talk to someone. Like I know Michael knows how to like actually cook. cook. Like Mike's not a microwave, mm-hmm. uh, pre-packaged, stick it in the oven for 45 minutes cooker. Like Mike be over there cooking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> talking to Mike the other day, he was chopping up, uh, uh, cabbage. Yep. Shit, I really should have bought the, <laughs> the, the, the Mike. So I know Mike knows. So if, from someone's perspective, uh, that uses it, that knows how to cook, uh, knows how to cook and actually gets good use out of an Instapot. That that's more of a selling point to me than uh, people who I know. And look, I'm not picking on you. If you don't know how to cook, you don't know how to cook. Like everybody can't do everything. That, that's not my right. point. But it's like a non technique techie person telling me, you know, uh, this do computer operating system is amazing all right you can do everything with this with this new candy os and it's like "Mm, does it have a terminal no okay see i can't listen to you right because you don't know what you're doing right Uh, so that that's my thing about that the air fryer um mm, air fryer man (laughs) (laughs) i knew that was gonna come up air fryer Uh, (laughs) <laughs> so, here, so here, here are my thoughts about it before you before you say anything like my my thoughts about it so here's what i've heard um and this could just come down to the person having a smaller air fryer as opposed to a larger air fryer uh doesn't cook a lot at one time uh but my thoughts on air frying and why i'm interested in it is that it does seem like a way to get the delicious delicious fried food uh without all the grease I want to make fried chicken in it. You haven't made um, fried chicken in it? Mike, what the hell are you no. doing, man? Well, well, let me rephrase that. I guess we have. We've made fried chicken breasts in it. Um, I want like chicken legs, though. Ah, man, yeah. yeah. Fried chicken legs are the or way wings. to wings. So. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Wings. Let me pepper <laughs> wings. Oh, yeah. Uh uh, so the air fryer that we have, I forget which model it was. We did get it from Walmart because, you know, we do a lot of shopping at Walmart. Uh, it's just so convenient. It's right there. Uh, Walmart so, has a, did you see this Walmart shipping plus thing? Yes. Got? Yes. For like $99 a year. Yeah. 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 We, we do not subscribe to it. But we do pay uh, some. I I don't even know because Mallory does it all. But like we'll put we'll talk about some things we want. And she'll add stuff to her cart, and then we'll do the curbside pickup when she gets off work, and do a lot of our grocery shopping that way. Makes it super convenient because then she just pulls in, they throw everything in the back of the car. Wow, nice. Yeah, I think we pay nine bucks or something for that. 
I don't know. Anyways, so we picked up this air fryer and at first I was like, man, you cannot fry food and get that crispiness in food from air. You need oil. Like that's that's just how this works. The physics do not work out in my mind. And Mallory's like, well, let's let's just try it. We can there's always a return policy. If you don't like it, we can return it. Well, that was two months ago. We still have the air fryer, so uh, that says anything. Uh it does render so the one we have has a touch screen on the top part of it. So that would not be accessible for someone who is by themselves without using uh, bump dots or something. I have two young men who need to get off the computer for five minutes so they can come push the buttons and set the temperature for me. Uh, and it's got below that touch screen, a door that you pull open. It's kind of like a little oven, like, like a little oven thing. And you know, Amazon has a, a lady enabled air fryer microwave uh something else that might be more accessible i was just impatient wanted it that day and didn't want to wait two days to get it so we picked this up it's got two shelves inside of it that you can slide out and put food on uh or you can pull both of those and then it's got a drip tray in the very bottom that you pull out when you're done cooking and clean that out And then, uh, it's got a basket that you put in on its side. So the basket bottom and lid have this little bar, these little bars that come out of each side that sit on the tracks that the shelves sit on. And then you can slide that back and lock it into place. And then you can set rotate. And so it'll cook the fries evenly. Uh, we can, we can get a pretty decent basket full of fries out of it. And usually for the four of us, it's, there's, there's a little bit of fries left over, uh, it it doesn't seem like a lot, but it is. Uh, I can't give you an exact amount. Uh, but they do make smaller air fryers, and so if you're if you're going to be feeding a larger family, look for the one that that will support larger uh, families. So I guess a larger amount of serving. <laughs> uh, it it does take a little bit of time. So for a basket of fries, it's going to take because I'm going to do steaks and fries tonight for dinner. And so for the fries, it's going to probably take 26 minutes to get the whole basket cooked, but they come out crispy. Uh, and it's not as unhealthy for you. You don't get the, the oily taste that you get with an air fryer, which uh, has pros and cons. Uh, I do kind of miss it sometimes, but what I love the most about it is, is you don't get the mess of an oil fryer because if Mm. you've ever cooked with an oil fryer, you will, no matter how clean you are, you will get oil in places you didn't know you can get oil. And then it turns into a huge mess and and maybe it's just me, but it, it it can become messy. So the air fryer does work pretty well. I'm I'm fairly satisfied with it. Hmm. I'll investigate it, man. Like I said, the, uh, initially I was like, eh. <laughs> uh, but you know, it was also like I, I do think this person may have gotten a smaller version uh, yeah. of the air fryer. Uh, and I was also like, man, look, I use peanut oil when I fry chicken or. You know, whatever. So that's a little healthier, right? Like I'm just not using the, <laughs> you know, f- or corn oil. I'm not just using the fat. You know, I'm not using Crisco. Like, geez, you know, it's, you know, I've been trying. Uh, uh, but yeah, it's it's, it's inter- interesting, man. Like I I don't have anything uh, in my kitchen other than uh, you know the stove and the microwave, uh, a dumb coffee pot. It's not even smart, man. What the hell are you doing with a Keurig? That, that explains your coffee preferences right now. So I'm the only one in the house that drinks coffee. And uh-huh. I was making myself a whole pot of coffee, usually two times a day. And because it was made, I felt like I needed to drink it. So gotcha. Mallory's mom bought me a Keurig because, A, we would use less coffee. And, B, uh, that way I wasn't drinking so much coffee. I think Mallory was slightly worried about my heart there for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, I, I have. Uh, I I actually deliberately got a somewhat smaller coffee pot for that reason. Uh, when I got the replacement pot that I have now, because I was like, well, yeah. if I don't get the big giant, you know, Mister Coffee, sixteen gallon fucking pot, I won't drink all of it. Because <laughs> once I make it, like I gotta drink it. Like, man, you know how much this coffee costs? Like, it ain't cheap, and it, it never tastes the same warmed up. So you gotta drink it while it's hot. So right. you drink it fast. <laughs> 
<laughs> right. That's the other thing because you can't you can't leave it. Uh, you know, if you leave it on the burner, like just just on for too long, then it just comes out tasting toasty, right? Yeah. Uh, that that is that that is that is some disgusting shit. Go drink some coffee that's been on a burner for about mm, eight hours. Uh, yes, disgusting. Yes, no. As a matter of fact, dear listener, don't don't go do that. Let me save you the trouble. I have done it. Don't do it because it's like, oh man, I left the coffee in there. I gotta go drink it. And it's like, oh oh, actually, I, I I don't have to drink it. Never mind. I, I really I, I I'm a grown up. I can dump this out. <laughs> exactly right. It's, it it is totally okay. Like I did not waste an entire pot of coffee. It's just like mm, you know, like the bottom fourth of it or something got trash whatever like no i'm not drinking that uh keurig is interesting i I have thought about the keurig and the reason that i would not buy one for myself uh i would accept one as a gift that's not a hint to anybody i'm just saying like in michael's case it was a (laughs) gift uh so i would probably be more inclined to try using it if i had if someone gave me one but the reason i wouldn't buy one is because it seems very iffy as to whether or not you have to use their particular uh pods or not and i don't like lock-in like that you know other than my usage of ios yes that's a choice i know i I made that choice to use the iphone uh the mac is actually more open than people give it credit for 90 percent of the time uh well, it used to be. We have no idea what the future holds. Uh, just like we don't know what happens tomorrow on election day. I hope you voted. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, my experience when Curie first came out uh, is, oh, you know, you got to buy their pods. And then there have been people who have been like, well, oh, no, you can buy these pods and they'll work with it too. And it's like, yeah, but then, you know, software updates. There's a book that if I can find a link to it, I will link to it uh, in the thing. It is unfortunately not free, but I think you can read a portion of it for free. Uh, it's called, uh, un- unlicensed bread, I think, or something. The The gist of the story is, it's kind of in the future a little bit, not too much. Uh, but everything that you have in your home is a smart device. Uh, so your refrigerator and your toaster and your wash dishwasher, but you can only use authorized stuff. So the bread that goes in your toaster has to come from, you know, the <laughs> X bread company because if you just try to put some random toast bread in there it's not going to work it's going to reject that shit uh i don't want to end up in that world so i did not buy a keurig for that reason and that reason alone because the thought that that michael or, or what has been working for michael not drinking as much coffee uh was a process right like it was a thought process it's like oh that's that's a more set amount of coffee per thing uh and i refused to go down the path of doing like the arrow press where oh you Put the grind the beans, put them in there, push the little plunger down, and then you know you get the coffee and you got a cup. And it's like I'm not doing that every time I want a fucking cup of coffee either. <laughs> <laughs> See, and and I don't use the actual K cups typically. Um, we only use them because we buy a box of the hot chocolate ones for the boys off Amazon. Oh, that uh, is a good idea too, though. Huh? Yeah, oh, shit, man. Yeah. So like, make me I use one. a refillable K cup though. Ah, and it's you fill it with coffee ground. And then you put that in the K cup machine, and then you know that the medium button is going to make a certain flavor of cup of coffee when you actually get coffee that's somewhat decent. We had that conversation earlier today. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'll, the other reason for me too is that I've gotten into the, the bean coffee and grinding. You know, again, I don't have a coffee grinder uh, at home, so I tend to buy my bag of beans and sam's or costco and then use their in-store grinder uh and bring it home and i'll put it in an airtight container so it lasts so i'll put it in an airtight container so it you know stays pretty fresh uh but that's the other thing for me too is like i think i was already buying my coffee and getting it ground uh before or right around the time the curate probably before the curate came out or at least before i knew about it uh so that's the other thing like you know how do i solve that problem with the curate Although the hot chocolate thing, the kids until you like hot chocolate. That that might be. I don't think I want to buy a cure just to make hot chocolate though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, excessive. You can just go get a. You can order a container of hot chocolate and just have them make their own hot chocolate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was gonna say it seems a little excessive. Uh, yeah, it's like oh, we're gonna buy a cure just to make hot chocolate. So now we've talked kitchen gadgets. Today's episode, uh, you can get show notes at yourownpay.com slash DM60. We're almost 200 episodes. Super exciting. And we're not, we're just over halfway to 100. Never mind. Just to disregard that. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm on Twitter at Payon, P-A-Y-O-W-N, and he's on Twitter. At Damasi, D-A-M-A-S-H-E. You've been listening to Your Own Pay Podcast. If you've enjoyed today's episode, visit yourownpay.com slash cast for exclusive content and to contact us today. We're eager to hear your thoughts and about how you're making this podcast your own. Thanks for listening. We'll be back soon. The Your Own Pay Podcast, yourownpay.com.